Hey there YouTube, if you haven't heard, a new version of Stable Diffusion is coming out. SDXL is right around the corner and here's what you need to know and how you can test it out right now for yourself. All the links for this information will be in the video description and it goes without saying when SDXL is officially released on open source, I will come out with an install tutorial right away. Also at the end of the video, I'll put some pictures together made by the community and myself so you can see what the new version has to offer and what type of pictures it produces. So if you didn't know, SDXL is already available on the paid versions, but you can try it right now for free on clip drop i know what you're thinking wait there's a paid version yes and it's not cheap at all and you're limited by the terms of service and you don't have all the cool tools and custom models that you have with the free open source versions you're also limited to what you can produce this is probably why some of you might not have heard of dream studio stability ai or clip drop the irony here is real isn't it one thing you'll notice when you first get on the clip drop site is that there's some beautiful image there produced by xdxl and some people are referring to this as the mid journey killer it's kind of like a meme because people for trying to get clickbait. Let's face it, Mid Journey is like magic. I don't even know how it's so great. Mid Journey might have the upper hand when it comes to fidelity, but in terms of customizing and getting the right composition with tools like ControlNet, text to video, deep faking with Roop, which was my most recent video, or creating custom models or embeddings, and of course, the ability to make images on your PC without being limited by the platform itself. Mid Journey ain't got nothing on that, at least not yet. So what's so special about SDXL and what does it stand for? So I did a bit of searching and I couldn't figure out what it stands for. This is kind of weird. Like the official sources don't have an actual definition of what SDXL stands for. And I can only assume it stands for Stable Diffusion Extra Large based on this being the largest open source model ever. I haven't officially confirmed that's what it actually stands for. So take that with a grain of salt, but that's probably what it means. This model is huge and it contains 3.5 billion parameters and 6.6 .6 billion parameters when running two models in tandem. Yes, it runs models in tandem. That's insane. But what does that mean for you? Well, it means more fidelity, more detail, and cohesiveness in the details like hands, and hopefully less fiddling with the negative prompt. Here's some of the examples from the blog post. The first one is showing a much more cohesive and proportionate hand. The older models have like double hands or stubby sharp thumbs or joints. The newer model seems to get all the proportions right, at least most of the time. Also with this picture of the alien, you can see the overall detail is much better. So the detail on the alien itself, the amount of detail on the back background with the lights, the buildings, most importantly with the people in the background. So that is much different than the picture before. So that's a huge change to the older models, but the older models don't really compare to the custom models. But even when comparing to the custom models, XDXL seems to be pretty nice. And it definitely has that mid journey feel. I don't know what it is, is those vibrant colors and that really cool kind of color palette that mid journey has and that particular attention to detail with the small things. Now let's get into the nitty gritty. SDXL is currently on version 0.9 and we can expect 1.0 to hit and fully release in mid July. And with that should come the open source release, which for us means the free version of Automatic 11.11, as well as the other ones like Invoke AI and Vlad Diffusion. And let's face it, that's really what the community is looking forward to. Not just because it's free, but this is where all the innovation comes out. This is where everybody starts creating the tools when they figure out they can do new things. People do some amazing things like ControlNet, the forum, group i mean there's so many cool things that stable diffusion could do and it's like every week there's something new that's pretty amazing but there's a caveat there because there's a big tbc next to it and that stands for to be confirmed which i thought it standard for like to be continued or something i don't know what tbc is i had to look that one up that's like their exit clause so if they don't deliver by mid-july they're like well we told you so you know we said tbc so maybe around mid-july to early august there's also one more big fat caveat that i wanted to bring up that nobody's really talking about in that kind of freaks me out. We should definitely talk about this one as a community here and discuss what this really means or if anyone has any additional info about this. Near the bottom of the Stability AI release blog, there is a one sentence that's just like a little jab. It says SDXL 0.9 is a release under a non-commercial research only license and subject to terms of use. Hopefully this is just for the 0.9 model before it's version one. Okay, let's talk about how you get started with clip drop so you can get into Stable Diffusion XL right now and start generating some images with a 0.9 model. So just go to the clipdrop.co Stable Diffusion link in my video description, and then just go ahead and click on sign in or sign up. And all you gotta do is choose your Google account if you have one, then choose the preferred email. I got several, that was it. Now I have an account and I can start generating photos. Yep. It's that easy. Of course, if you don't have a Google or Facebook account, you'll have to fill in the information. But if you do, it's gonna take you a couple seconds, 10 seconds right there. And take a look at these pictures here. And these are just glorious. Man, look at this candy castle and 
All of this reminds me is reminiscent of Mid Journey version 4. Some of these pictures are comparable to version 5, but they are stunning. I mean, look at them. We've come a long way. Look at these robot hands. Something off about it, but it still looks pretty nice and it still has five fingers. I think that's the most important part because you can work with that. I really love this picture of a house here. Whoops. Okay, I guess if you click on something, it generates something similar. So these are miniature houses with plants in a potted area. And man, look at these pictures. I really like these pictures and the amount of detail that it has, like the bokeh effect, the, the blur, and the reflection of the lights on the table, as well as the other plants in the background. It's just overall a really nice picture. And these are the types of pictures you can expect to see all day using this model. So I'm really excited for SDXL when it comes out to the open source model, which is automatic 11.11. And then we got a sample of anime here for you anime lovers. So these are generating images every time I click on it and it takes like 10 seconds which is truly amazing so these are really nice and this is legit anime I really like this anime style with a dirty look that looks like it's hand-drawn and you can see some of the reflections here on the water it's overall just amazing photo although it looks like he's holding hands with the air here I mean once we get the live version we can fix all of that here's another photo of the same scene and it looks like they're actually holding hands now and here's another photo again I guess it's 1990s anime has that older kind of manga feel, a dirty hand-drawn feeling. So that's interesting. When you click on one of these, it's basically just creating an example from what you actually clicked on. So you're not looking at that same picture. And this is without any negative prompts. So this is pretty amazing that it's coming out not all crazy without negative prompts. Yeah, and that's not the case for 2.1. Uh, Stable Diffusion 2.1, if you don't put a negative prompt, you're going to get something horrendous. You're going to get something like with their back over the top of their head or some crazy like Silent Hill character. So let's take a look at the free model and what you get with that. So you get 400 images per day. They will have a watermark, but there's a lot of other features with clip drop. I don't know if you knew this, but it has some pretty amazing features like an upscaler as well as relight. And relight is super cool. You can actually change the lighting of your photo to make it look like there was a red light in the photo, a blue light, or you can change where the shadow actually exists based on where you put the lighting source. So you can put the lighting source behind him or to the right and the shadow will adjust accordingly. So that's pretty amazing. And they also have a background remover. They got a text remover. Although it's limited to 1024 by 1024, which is kind of funny because you could just throw it into the image upscaler right after and make it a 2048 by 2048. So just food for thought there. And all these other services won't have a watermark. It's only the mobile options as well as the Stable Diffusion XL right now that has the watermarks on them. Also the uncrop. But all the other services like Cleanup Pictures, Image Upscaler, and Relight will be watermark free. And for those of you going big time, there's an API here so you can actually run this in your business or whatever application that you're doing. So I'm not going to go into to the API pricing, but you can go to the website and check it out or pause this video right now and check it out. All right, so let's go back to generating some pictures. One thing I thought was cool here is this style button. So if you click on this, you could change it to all different types of styles here. There's isometric, there's low poly, like your poly art, you got pixels. So that's like Minecraft, which is similar to poly art. Low poly is like if it was made like in the PS1. There's origami, which is like the famous mid journey paper cut style. You got line art that makes it look like a hand drawn thing that you could color in. You got analog film that makes it look like old school fantasy art, which is probably what I'm going to use. Photographic to make it photorealistic and digital art, anime. Uh, I mean, there's a lot of bunch of styles to choose from here. So let's try a photo. All right. So I typed in a prompt. Let's see if it could do this. This would be interesting because I actually put an artist's name at the end. Let's see if it lets me do it or not. So I'm going to click fantasy art. Okay. So it did it, but uh, this is not really what I was uh, expecting. Let's try photographic art. I want this to look kind of like reality. Click generate. All right, let's take a look at what we got here. And so these are all pretty nice images and what I would expect with a, for a fairy inside a bottle. The most important thing to understand is that it actually put it inside the bottle, which is very important. So that tells me it understands English a little bit better, the human language, which is good. It wouldn't always be the case with 2.1, even though that was one of the improvements that was made over 1.5. And all these pictures are really nice. What a few imperfections but check this out. If you click on this button right here, you can actually clean up the imperfections and you could select a particular portion right here. There's this extra wing on her butt. Looks like there's an extra foot here and I'll just click on clean and it's not perfect. So it did clean it up, but it you can see a little smudge here. So that would actually be better taken care of in actual stable diffusion, but it does erase objects and blends it with the background. From far away, it looks pretty good, but if you were to actually zoom up close, you'll probably see where I did that clean. But still, that's a pretty cool tool. Actually, let's see if we can actually actually clean this off here. We don't want that. Let's see what it does. Wow. Perfect. Okay. 
Wow, that's actually pretty amazing. It removed its own watermark. So this thing is really good at removing watermarks. That's ironic. It actually did a really good job at removing the watermark. Like you can't even tell there was a watermark here. It's kind of funny that we use their own tool to remove their watermark. That's amazing. Let me thumbs up that. That's a really good one. Now, let me show you another cool tool. So we're actually going to go here and click on Relight. And Relight is amazing. It's going to ask me to downscale because... It only does it in 1024, but that's cool. We'll just throw it back into their upscaler. So no problem there. So now we have three lights here. I'm going to delete all the lights and start fresh. So just click on this trash can here. So this is not a relight tutorial, so I'm going to go pretty fast, but feel free to jump in here and play with this tool. So you click on this button, you could change the original background light source. I'm going to change it back to white for a normal background. And then I'm going to click on a new light here. We're going to make it come from this direction. So we can make this any color we want. We can make it green or we can make it blue. Let's make it a blue light. And before anyone says I'm ruining the picture, yes, I am, but just trying to show you what this thing does. So you could actually put it in the center here, change the distance on it till it actually goes in the background. Then you could raise the strength on it. As you can see, the background behind the bottles lighting up blue. So that's a pretty cool effect. And you can move the light around. If it starts to show again, you can lower the distance. But yeah, you can put this light anywhere. You can make it a white light. It just changes the overall feel of the image and you can actually change the shadowing as well. To change the shadowing, you have to go to the ambient lighting and actually lower it. Then you can go to your light source and play with the shadowing. As you can see, the shadowing looks very different, whether I decrease or increase the distance. Then you could also change the radius. Now it looks like a much different picture. You can click on the eye icon here when you're done playing with it, and then click on this to see what it was before, and what it was after. And if you wanted to, you can add a different color, like red or something like that. So as you can see, it looks like a completely different photo. So this is a pretty nice tool. And you just click on download to download it, or you can actually send this to upscale to bring it back to 2048. Actually, you could send this to clean imperfections first, and then you could just do this right here. You can remove any imperfections. Just kidding. Don't do that. But I'm just showing how amazing that is. It doesn't look like there was one there to begin with. So that's pretty amazing. But don't do that. I'm going to press Control Z to bring that back because I don't want to download the picture without the watermark and then enhance and upscale. So you can just bring this back to 2048. No problem. Even though you can only go to 2048, this is a really good upscaler because you can do some things here. You can actually go to denoise or sharpen. So you can click on sharpen and see how that affects the picture. Now, this picture is already good. So I can go back in here and upscale that picture that I already upscaled, which is the 2048 one, and then just click on upscale. But if you actually wanted to pay for it, I mean, it's only $7 a month and it's up to 16 times upscale for seven bucks a month. Come on, that's crazy. So wait, just a caveat there. This is not $7 a month. You have to click on the monthly tab unless you're paying for the whole year. So that's $9 a month, but that's still relatively cheap, but I'm not selling anything. I have no affiliation on my small channel with clip drop, especially after that watermark thing. Don't do that, guys. But man, 16 times upscale, $9 a month. You get all this relight stuff. And if you had a weak computer, this is an option for Stable Diffusion XL. But then you're going to be missing out on ControlNet, all the custom models, embeddings, which is really why you want to use Stable Diffusion, right? But not bad. Pretty cheap. Again, I'm not selling anything. Alrighty, for the next part of the video, I'm just going to show a bunch of pictures and you can be the judge. You can take a closer look at these pictures and, and most of these pictures are going to be pictures I generated. But if you like the video, definitely drop a like and click that like button. And if you want to see more content like this, go ahead and subscribe. Anyways, thanks again. See you in the next video.